Hello and welcome back to round two coverage from the PDGA Professional Disc Golf World Championships presented by Grip6. We are in Ogden, Utah at the Fort for the back nine. Beautiful conditions and some low scores so far. A lot of action going on here during the second round of the World Championships here at the Fort. Like we'd expect, solid front nines for everybody on the card. Incredibly, not a single bogey stroke, but let's check in with Emerson Keith, who seven under in the front nine. That almost seems impossible. Shred fest. Incredible. Let's see a hole breakdown, Yuli, on hole 10. I'm Paul Uliberry with today's Bushnell hole breakdown. You can find the Edge Disc Golf Rangefinder at the link in the description. Hole 10 is a favorite here in Utah. This 598 foot par four is all about placement. If your drive isn't perfect, manufacturing a good look at birdie will be tough, especially when you're dealing with this triple mandatory. If you have the power, the easier the approach, as long as you're online. Let's see how it plays out. Jeez, I wish that guy would like cheer up a little oh, bit. Oh boy, he is a grumpy soldier. <laughs> I'm going Star Destroyer. And can't quite, oh, there it is. And just catching a little edge. That's nope. great, actually. Ended up, kept skipping and bouncing and bouldering down the fairway and maybe preferably just a bit more right. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's little inside. So this could be trouble if it doesn't, okay. Getting down early, actually that probably didn't hurt him. If that moves any farther left, he might not have an angle to get into the green. And this is one where these guys definitely have legitimate eagle chances. They throw it far enough to where they can get an 80 footer, 90 footer pretty easily, which is insane. I like that play from Kevin, just taking the trees out of the way, going all the way around, uh, kind of shorting the distance up a, quite a bit, but putting himself in a position that he knows he's going to have a second shot into the green. This is crushed from Ricky. Yeah, that's ideal. Oh, and, there you go. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> so good. And you're lining up a dart? Yes. Oh, you're actually in a great angle. That, that camera angle initially confused me a bit. That's a fantastic shot off the tee. Great approach. Short putt for the birdie. Kevin going for the skip approach. A couple of uh, rocks there, right there at the green to kind of stop people maybe from out of position, throwing a flick roller through the gap, forcing the players to go with the higher approach shot. That was just so smooth from Calvin. His tempo is so controlled never wavers in the situations he puts himself in for eagle thank you and you know he was trying to make that but it's just so hard to push that ceiling especially when you have just an absolute drop in bid for bird there are a couple of trees on the front side that will keep you honest that was unexpected the rim of the basket will always keep you honest, though. Yeah. Nice. Good birdie from Calvin and Kevin. Rick with a pretty simple one here as well. Hole 11, par three, 484 feet. This one is really, really tough. There's so many trees in the fairway, and then there's a kind of a wall of trees about 80 short of the basket that you're gonna see here in a second. The drone kind of bobbing and weaving, trying to find its way up here. The play is a huge flex or a really high turnover. You need the disc to move well right with the distance driver way up high and then come in late 
You don't really want to finish left. You can see that green is super well protected. This is on the line you're looking for. Yeah, this is great. Just get past these. Oh my goodness. That's parked. Well, he actually is kind of obstructed there. He's parked, but he has a trick putt from 15. Yeah, 15, 20, I'd say. Yeah, that is insanely good for Calvin. Not only getting it up there around That's the corner, but missing those last trees at the end. That is such a hard thing to do. Kevin clips early, which is the only reason that that didn't get up there as well. Yep. Good angle, good power. This right. is just two nose up. Oh, you gotta go. That's going to stall out just a bit. And you'll see what that's like a traditional, I mean, not traditional, but that is a Stop. more common oh, result. Hard to commit fully to go for this kind of power. And uh, you're throwing it out of sight around the corner. So if you miss your angle at all, it can well, be trouble. Especially with those guys, because as Nate, you're way inside here. This is going a bit left. You'll have some sort of scramble up, maybe a long look if you really want to get greedy. But those guys who throw it so far, it's like probably tough to lay off it a bit. Mm -hmm. And that will be a par. Yeah, I'd certainly meant to go more high and right there. Kevin giving it a good run from 80. Oh, gotta, another good round there. You got to be careful around this green, though, because that tree is so close to the basket on the backside that look what Calvin has to do from inside 20 feet. And this isn't his regular putt by any means. I, yeah, I, I don't know. Man, Brutal. That's, 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 that's quite punishing. Very punishing to throw a drive that good and, and not really have a good look for the birdie. Well, in... Jesus, dude. Yeah, he's even not. Two inches away, it's nothing. Yeah, he's he was really uncomfortable there as well. I think that that's where the design comes in right there. To, your drive isn't supposed to go that far, right? These are the putts that you're running. If you don't connect, then you go a little bit deep, and you should be punished with maybe a little tough comeback or something. I think maybe that's where the design's going there. I could see that. To where they're like not thinking about the top one percent that's just going to throw something a million mm. feet past. Looking Oof. at hole twelve here, par four, five hundred and ten feet through a really tight gap to start. There's an OB fence along the entire right side of the hole, and that first gap isn't the only gap. Here comes gap number two. It's pretty tight. Now let's talk about gap number three, tightest one yet, thanks to this snag in the middle of the fairway. That's like ideal landing zone right there, gap yes, three. absolutely. And then it doesn't get any easier up by the green. You see how many small trees protect this basket from almost all sides. Then there's an out of bounds creek right behind it. Oh, wow. Uh, oh my God. How far is he from the basket? Like 120. Oh Ew. I would say it, it was fantastic. Oh, no. Kevin Jones is in trouble. Uh, there, that is going to be an adventure. We we might be in danger of seeing our first red number here Missed on that. our league group. Miss it, please. All right, sorry. <laughs> I think he was worried about the inside kick maybe right or something like that but that should be manageable for so, some sort of scrappy scrappy up from there oh and you pulled inside. this side yeah that's good little kick though honestly staying, to, yes to yeah, stay in the fairway that's definitely paramount. i am blown away still by calvin's drive gap three as it were is such a tight gap to hit a, just by itself but then there's a two and a half foot wide tree that goes up 15 feet high that just dissects that gap right in half. And he just raced past that gap as if it were, oh Look my at gosh. this. Good shot. What? Yeah, wow. buddy. Yeah. From out of position. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> That's what Come you on, have man. to say. <laughs> and that was just honestly taking advantage of a really good kick. 
Yeah, that was uh, one of the best shots I've thrown in a long time. That was insane. And that little the ramp. The skip off the log. Ah, oh, man. Kevin's going to have to make a long one. Which is scary because there is water right behind it as well. Let me say, I'm not happy to see Kevin struggling, but it is a little bit more of a picture of what you're traditionally seeing out here. <laughs> This is the kind of thing that you normally see people do at the fort. And we really haven't seen anyone in that big of danger yet. And, and that is not really the, the same story, the narrative that's going on on all these other cards across the course. This four par. And after out of position drive approach of the day nice an insane birdie putt wow i mean uh, an insane birdie pickup i should say not the birdie putt was great but the birdie pickup is insane yeah, from that, that was position a crazy 25 footer dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude. maybe a bit dramatic that was there, fun it was fun that's cool birdie for calvin as well Oh, yeah. Going back to his drive. Wow. What? <laughs> Jeez. Hole 13, par 3, just 215 feet, but it's a little tricky one. You can see, you can barely even see the basket. All kinds of obstructions here. You'd like to go with sort of a high Anheuser forehand, perhaps. Try to bring it back between this little gap and find some kind of putt, but it's an elevated basket and the creek is right there. All OBs go to a pretty punishing drop zone. Calvin going the high route and works out great. Yeah, the, really the biggest decision, I think forehand's gotta be the play and maybe Kevin might go grenade or something like that. But the play is just really, are you gonna go under that branch or over that branch? Scary little putt there. Yeah, that's pretty short. This looks pretty good. He's going the wide route, stalling it back. Just sit down. Yeah, that's perfect. Forehand. Okay. Ah, boring. <laughs> that just held Annie too long. Yeah, but he might be tempted from there. Oof. I yeah, mean, that is 45, but these guys are really good at those. I mean, there isn't a way to miss that putt. Oh, didn't even take yeah. the bag off. Doesn't throw the grenade. Doesn't go for the putt. <laughs> I don't think there's a way. He's you playing can. the world championships, obviously. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, what? Where did Nate Safeton go? Never met him. <laughs> this is off the band. <laughs> it's off the band, but it goes in. Oh, <laughs> never met him. Oh, my god. Never goodness. heard of the guy. <laughs> I can help you get that out of there next time if you need my help. Nice drive, nice putt, nice birdie. You know, this is short, but I really like this hole. I like, I like that there is a hole on the planet where the shot is that high flex shot because that is like kind of a scramble shot that you have to throw all the time and everybody should have it in their bag mm -hmm. and to see it on a course is actually kind of cool i agree with you mm -hmm. i think it's it's a fun shot to throw hole 14 par 4 652 feet out of bounds creek running down the right side of the fairway really a low ceiling drive you'd like to throw a low distance driver that's going to get you a big skip up into this area to set up crossing that same creek and finishing with sort of a floaty hyzer to the left here to try to find the green it's a another hole that kind of forces you into some scramble feeling positions not really a landing zone that i would say is is super super obvious or easy i like this low racer from calvin Oh, skipping left. I think he wants to be a little straighter, honestly. I think that that's a, it's a fa fan favorite to see a big shot like that with a big skip, but I don't 
came around there so fast that dad grabbed his kid and said, we're, we're kind of, kind of in the landing zone. Let's. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. And that's OB early and not a really good angle for a second shot. Yeah, that's in the creek. Really didn't want to throw it inside, trying to convince myself to commit, and I overdid it. This is too high. That's the shot I was trying to avoid, but I would trade in a heartbeat <laughs> at this point. No doubt. Kevin shot. Kevin throws this shot so well. That Heiser flip. Oh, but does he pull? A little bit right. He does. Yeah. It's a decent reaction. These low ceilings really open up for Kevin with the way that Come he throws on, those hyzer flips, but just a little bit errant that time. What do you what do you have here? Uh dart. Find me, Kev, right here. Stuck up against a tree a little bit. He's trying to get aggressive here. Oh, going down the straight wide right gap. That gap is visible from the tee, but that's not the ideal second shot gap. You don't see this often. Calvin, backdoor forehand. Is that there? No, but... It's probably the best thing he had. I guess so. He was so far left with that huge skip. Ricky Anheuser forehand from the knee. Oh, you. Mm. That's going to leave him a good so 90, 80 feet, something like that. Kind of a must get up and down for you right here. You you laid up into a decent spot, but that's still, yeah. There's work to be done. Yep. That leaves a little bit to be desired right there. That'll be for for a bogey. That angle is tough, you know, the, to to get around those initial trees that make that gap and then not go too long is it's a very fine line. So Ricky will be taking a bogey, so if not more. Now it just keeps rolling. Evan, Woo. This is Calvin for birdie. And a little piece. Yep. So to save the bogey, uh, just off the right side cage. That would be a double bogey and that unblemished scorecard for you and Ricky is it gonna have a little red on it now. I think I, I think I might avoid red entirely. Oh yeah, you're gonna skip right over to a purple. Purple. I, think. I hate that I know that. What color that is. <laughs> Hopefully I don't. Hopefully I'm wrong. Maybe it's brown. It's purple. <laughs> you know it's purple. <laughs> I can tell you from experience, it's a very ugly shade of purple. Oh. <laughs> there it is. This actually looks pretty nice next to that teal. Let's see if we can get a teal on the other side of the purple. That would be a good idea. And this is a good place to do it on the 15th. Par three, 313 feet. Got that initial tiny gap to go through. And then a bunch more gaps here as you reach this kind of intermediate area of the hole. So many small trees. You just do your best to pick a gap. Try to throw a low, powerful shot through there. Then you have an elevated basket. This down log is really well placed at around 40 feet. That stops you from sliding or throwing a roller. There is a huge hyzer play uh, that I think Ricky's been doing. Calvin loves straight shots like these. He eats these up, and uh, yeah. That got a perfect little adjustment from a tree. I think it would have been pretty nice either way, but just kept him perfectly straight right to the basket. Kevin going hyzer flip. 
Is this turn too much, or has I got enough to hide? Yeah, catching that log. And make no mistake, those two trees right off the tee, although it looks pretty big on camera, it makes you nervous. It definitely makes you have to think about like, oh, okay, I gotta make sure that I punch this as straight as possible. Here's Ricky breaking the hole down. <laughs> you might hear a little action in the background. Don't worry, we're, we're gonna get around to that in just a bit. Just catching one of those last guardians. That would have moved its way probably up around circle two, but pretty makeable. This is more of a, this, a long soft. prayer. Yeah, soft bid though. Yeah. It's tough because it's a tall basket with a low ceiling. You, If you want to run that, you have to risk going at least 30 long. Oh, Kevin. Huge oh, Kev. putt for Kevin. Oh, man. Nice one, Kev. After hitting that log of the drive that was looking so good, unfettered, and delivering a perfect putt. That is fantastic. Yeah, that was so pretty. Great angle out of the hand, just an inch over the rim. And Ricky finally dancing one of these over the rim. He's had a couple that just hit that top nub and just don't quite fall in the basket this time. Heiser. Yeah. Heiser, All Heiser. Oh, yeah, over the top. Three birdies on 15. It's, it is such a demanding tee shot, and it, it can be daunting. Such a lead card thing to do. Yeah, it really is. Jeez. So Calvin now maintaining the lead here at 16 under. As we take a look at one of the signature holes, it's 16, the island green going way downhill here, 319 feet with the water behind it. You've basically just got circle one to land your disc in. If you can't put it within that 10 meters, you're going to a drop zone that's roughly 75 feet. Now let's take a look at our Gatekeeper Media Chase Card check-in. James Conrad getting started on hole one. And that's how you want to start your fort journey. That's a huge putt. Now two hole 16. Look at that view. Go in there. And there you have it. That was the, that was the cheers you heard in the background on the previous hole. Incredible $500 ace bounty on the line. James hits it. What a shot on the 16th. Just a straight dunker. And that is a putt for par on hole 18, moving James Conrad up the leaderboard. Thank you to Gatekeeper Media for the chase card check-in. Here to Calvin. And rumor was that that was the first time James had ever yeah. thrown that disc. Oh, that's fantastic. Nicely done there for Calvin. Action, and that's what high speed discs do on this green with this elevation drop when a wide edge high speed disc comes down it's so hard to tell what it's going to do sometimes it stops yeah sometimes it rolls forward sometimes it plunkers forward you just never really quite know sometimes it just goes in <laughs> well that's a putter so is this oh that's gotta go yep this is Ricky's pig, and watch this thing just go gobble, gobble. Just eats up the grass there. Shots, guys. Classic Rick. Gobble, gobble. If he's going, gotta go, that's gotta go, it's perfect. Oink, oink. Yeah, looks good. This is nice low speed with a high nice speed shot. disc. Oh, look at that. It's just so weird. You never see that kind of ground play. Oh, yeah. Except on shots like this. Everybody on the island. Which is just great. I mean, seems like the winds kind of calmed down a oh, little yeah. bit, which is nice. You see the calm over the nice pond there. When there's some wind on this hole, though, man, it is 
it is so tricky deciding what kind of stability you're gonna go with, what speed, backhand, forehand, grenade. Thank you. If Kevin could have it his way, I'd like to see him try throwing a trick shot on this one, just for fun. Star frame, educational disc golf experience, the benefactor there. Looking at 17, beautiful tee shot, water carry of roughly 300 feet to try to get across and into these woods. It sets up, you'd like to get as right as you can really, I think, somewhere into this area or even one more gap over to the right to set up sort of a straight shot up to the basket. The only out of bounds once you're up here is long. So if you get past those logs, you kind of find the park road and you're gonna take a penalty there. Oh, what? I'll get through. Oh, my God. Good shot, so it's a good oh my, that is yocked. Oh, my God. He yocked it, bro. I totally agree. Crushed. He, has, a, he has 150 <laughs> in. That's insane. And not even going the turnover line. Just the high hyzer yock job. Just right down the right side fairway. Oh, my gosh. Oh, look at this play. Don't hit that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's the more traditional oh. yacht, but my goodness, thank Calvin's you. shot is 100 feet past that. The one thing I've noticed about Ricky this year is he's throwing like a traditional flight with even drivers as far as like you would see somebody playing catch or something. Look mm. at this shot. This is just a great shot as oh, well. Oh, racing over to the right. Absolutely Ooh, perfect. You, you hate the lie. But, yeah. But you like the shot. But you know how he, he's doing his follow through and kind of stopping it to throw it on that Anheuser? Like, mm -hmm. I'm not seeing anybody else do that in the field. He definitely has some command on the angles. See, Kevin, a little out of position. Big high turnover. Don't go behind that building. Does it? Not really. I think he's he's got a, a bit of a an alley. If you're, if you're actually close to the building, there's an opening that's low ceiling, but you got to look at the basket for the birdie. And so you're just chipping to a spot, or did yeah, you not I was have just, much? I was just trapped in between all those trees. Hard to get us to space to swing the arm. So yeah, I, I just kind of played through the biggest gap, try to get up and have a circle two putt. All right, that'll work. Yeah, Ricky, after that big tee shot, didn't really have too much for his second. Look at this. That is so ridiculous. He's got a chip shot. Oh no! <laughs> Are you serious right now? Oh, that's so that's what sad. you get. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's kind of a bummer. <laughs> Ricky, oh no! Come on, man! So funny. Oh, man, I thought you were going to make that for some reason. I would have liked to. Did you think that you were going to make that? I thought I had a chance. There's that gap you were talking about. It's kind of a fun shot to bank them off the pro shop. Calvin, don't do this to us. Just make it. Oh, oh. no. Not rewarded with the yakiest shot you're going to see on hole 8, 17 all day long. Oh, boy. Hang on. Yeah, that was a little scary. Pretty honestly, pretty pretty boring hole right there, except for the big drive. I mean, a couple pars there. You're normally gonna see a few birdies. This is a very scorable hole once you get past the water. If you clear the water, you're gonna have some sort of shot into that green. So that's surprising to me to not see any birdies come from there. 
One more hole today, 18 par four, 650 feet. This one is a water carry to start, but what makes it even more difficult than that is out of bounds lines on both sides, particularly the right that runs right, just right of where the drone is flying now. Then you've got a mandatory, you have to stay left of this pole. And from this point forward, you're talking about roughly 30 to 40 foot wide inbounds area that kind of pops out a little for a circle one sized place at the at the green. Let's take a look at who's making some moves out there before we get to the last hole. Let me guess, Paul Macbeth. With this gem of a tee shot on hole five. Wow, and even working back left. That is so good. And leaving that Anheuser approach, which gets through cleanly. The fact that he had an oh. Anheuser right there is unbelievable. And that shot looks so good and it still came up short, but it doesn't matter when you're Paul Macbeth of the World Championships, he's cleaning those up. Onto the T of seven. And good birdie. Par five ninth, getting his drive turned over and that's gonna get around that mandatory only issue that could be there is if it's too long, which it is not. Out left is a good angle, setting him up for a 100 foot shot for the eagle. Oh, tree helped it. Oh. Almost close. getting it. So close. The 16th. Making it look easy. I guess this is how you uh, get yourself back in the tournament, just like that. Those, that's a lot of good quality birdies. And that takes Paul to 13 under par. Keep in mind, Paul Macbeth would have been on this card today if he had not had a double bogey on hole 18 in round one. You know, he's trying to make up for that mistake. Wow, another birdie. And would birdie the 18th to come in at 15 under through two rounds. Bogey free, yeah. One of six players on the day, I believe, to shoot bogey free. That is unfathomable here at the fort. Uh, Looking now at Emerson Keith, we've talked about him a little bit today already. Eight under through the first 10. This is a man on a mission. You know what I've noticed with him when his sidearm's working? Like, I feel like that's the glue that almost holds his whole game together. Like he's throwing mm -hmm. in little darts with it, you know, here, and he's throwing it for power. Dave Dunape says he has the best form in disc golf. Let's get back to our lead card. And let's, gonna see, let's see who's gonna stay on our lead card here by what we transpires over the second hardest hole on the course. Certainly Emerson going to claim one of those spots. 18 under par. Currently sitting in first place. With Calvin sitting at wow. 17, mm -hmm. like he'd have to birdie to get take that take that down, but he already has a you know, position on that on that card, so I'm curious to see if he opts to lay up or if he goes for, for that shot from that position. It's a really tough Anheuser play. I don't see him throwing sidearm as Ricky right. is in close position as well. Nice shot from Kevin. There is OB left. It's moving over there, but he stays safe. Doesn't have too much more room over there. And you're going flex forehand with your Excalibur? Yes. And this is looking money. Oh, so, no. <laughs> so that tree from the tee is 418 feet that you hit squared up right there. Wow. Ricky wants no part of that dangerous second shot. A little Thank bit you. out of position. He's going to be just fine with a par. Kevin getting aggressive here. Looks great. 
Oh, that is so good. Fantastic Heiser flip. Fantastic shot. What is that, 400 feet? It has to be close. Maybe a little under. And you're going to let him just throw that right in front of you? Oh, there's Nate too, Safety. I was a little mm -hmm. bit too much to the right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. If I was where mm -hmm. Kevin was, I probably would have dunked it <laughs> you from there. You never met Nate <laughs> But I couldn't safety. do it because I was mm -hmm. too far right. I had yep. to go with Rick, you mm -hmm. know. No, I, I, I thought about going, but I didn't like my angle. Calvin, he is going for it. Calvin is going for it. What a psycho. Oh, and he's oh, hitting so it. Good. Unbelievably tough shot. <laughs> like to so throw scary. that high as well. He didn't even throw a low burner at it. He drifted it in there. That's so good. Well, you better dunk this one to make up for it. No. <laughs> And that's a nice, you make that one, that's a solid round. Keeps you right there in the mix. You know, we saw Emerson coming in at 18. And that's going to put you right in the middle. That four to six down is a very good score out at the fort. The Anything score, above that is amazing. Absolutely. And the score I'm looking at is that, you know, Calvin makes that putt to go to 18. That's the lead. And you're three off of that. And we see this birdie putt that oh, does yeah. get him to 18. I came into the day, the number I was thinking was five. I'll be like, that's what I want to do five or better. So I'm not too worried. Got to make this one here. Oh, yeah. Pretty happy other than the double bogey, that ugly purple. But uh, other than that, solid enough. But this for birdie. This hole yeah. is so hard. Insane. <laughs> it's so, so tough. It is really, truly remarkable to think that 21 players in this field birdied hole 18. It is a awesome way to finish your round. Looking at our scores one last time, Calvin 18 under, tied with Emerson for the lead. That blazing 26 on the back nine. Fantastic. But the fire emoji goes home with Keith. 10 under on the day, bogey free. Fantastic performance following up his win at the Utah Open just two weeks ago. He likes playing here. I think it's safe to say he likes playing here. It was foretold in the prophecy. Mackenzie said, go ahead, win Utah Open. Go win Worlds. I mean... We're only two out of five rounds in, but this man is showing that he is here to stay at the World Championships. This, is, this guy has slept on a lead before. Maybe the pressure of what happened in 2019 won't be quite as tough this time around. Yet to be seen. We'll see you tomorrow from Mulligans at the World Championship.